it's Mishi again and uh, a lot of people have been asking me um, about my nursing story and so here I am today and that's what I'm going to talk about so basically I was born and raised in UAE known as United Arab Emirates known as Dubai the commercial city although technically I'm not from Dubai I'm a couple hours away and uh, what else so yeah I was born and raised there did my elementary in my high school and then as my older sister was getting into first year of uh, university uh, she we decided to go to the Philippines because it was uh, cheaper and uh, a good quality um, education there and so we moved to Philippines and I was in grade 11 in the middle of high school and um, there was no grade 11 in Philippines so I kind of went back to the 10th grade if that makes any sense because 10th grade is apparently like the last uh, year of high school so I kind of did that and then for several months and then graduated and started my four years of nursing in Philippines so after that was uh, I'd say 2005 to 2009 so year of 2009 I finished my nursing passed the nursing uh, Philippine nursing uh, licensure exam and had my name in the newspaper I can't forget that that was totally awesome experience um, and then shortly after passing the exam we moved to Canada uh, the thing is, halfway through my nursing, I think I was second year nursing when my mom moved to Canada and she was asking if we wanted to move right away. Um, however, I decided to finish what I started. So what, we wanted to finish our nursing in Philippines first and then move to Canada. I'm not sure that I that was the right decision because when we went to Canada, um, after being sponsored by my mom, I needed to undergo this really long process of um, bridging to Canadian nursing. It took up four years, another four years of my life, unfortunately. It may have gone sooner, but because of the circumstances, it took that long. Um, so upon arriving in Canada, we heard about going into the Board of Nursing website. Um, because I'm in Alberta, it was Karna. So we went online and applied for it. However, found out that the assessment process of them looking through our papers alone cost 400 something dollars. And um, having come from uh, studying and having zero dollars to my name, I knew that I had to uh, get a job. So I uh, had to start off with survival jobs, worked um, in Amer American Eagle, um, in the mall, and in Payless Shoe Source, and then I worked in Elisa's Jewelry, which was a jewelry store. So I kind of went around trying to um, make uh, enough money for the assessment process. And then finally, I was able to a year later. So that's why I was a bit, uh, I was set back a bit. And um, yeah, so after that, I s sent my papers to Karna and that took a good year again and during that year I I went around hospitals trying to get in even as a healthcare aid and they wouldn't let me because I didn't have a healthcare aid certification despite my Bachelor of Science degree it's like as long as it's not done in Canada they do not credit for it at all and that was disheartening and there were lots of times when I felt like it was a bad move to move to Canada and all that um, there were so many setbacks, but then I realized that I'm already here. I might as well push through and uh, So after that um, A year later we finally heard back from Karna and they asked us to appear for uh, SEC or substantially equivalent competency exam This was an assessment exam to see what my gaps are and based on that I would have to um, take up courses and study for it However, um, what happened was it was a five-day exam, five, day, five days of torture for me because it was like a mix of written exams of over 200 questions, 
actually it was more like 250 questions, multiple choice and short answers. So it was very, very content heavy. We had to learn everything from med search to pedia to maternity and OB, I mean, and to um, mental health, everything basically. And on top of, so there were three things we had to do. There were written exams on all major subjects. There was an interview type of exam where it's like an oral exam. They kind of throw um, scenarios at you and you have to verbally answer or explain your choice of actions and your assessments and whatnot. And then there's a triple jump, which is also like an interview type where it, they it's like a big case and then a couple of questions based on that case scenario. That's the triple jump. So it's like oral and oral exams are so nerve wracking because you don't have the choices in front of you. You have to answer based on your knowledge, based on your skills. And me having uh, no experience, no working experience, that was very, very hard for me, especially with OB. I remember there was a day that I appeared for exam and we were supposed to have med surge, but then the med surge instructor couldn't come. She called in sick or something. And so we had to do OB instead that day. And I was so unprepared and I knew that I was going to fail that particular subject. And uh, so that was very, very uh, disgusting. And I, I don't want to go through it again. That was the most painful experience ever. And a lot of uh, comments from other people say that they felt like the assessment exam was meant to fail you. And I do believe that because they, they would push you to the limits. They even made a, a scenario where the doctor wasn't around and the uh, woman was about to deliver her, her baby. What do you do? Like they push you to your limits and having no experience at all. I was, I didn't know what was right and what was wrong. And yeah, there was just a, a lot of negative experience with that, I'd say. Um, this is different in other provinces, by the way. In Ontario, I know that the SEC is only a one-day um, event where you go to multiple stations and you do different exams in each stations kind of thing. So it's not as painful as Alberta. <laughs> and um, yeah, things have changed since then. I believe the SEC is no longer happening right now. Or maybe it still kind of is, but you have the choice to take it. I say don't take it <laughs> go straight to the courses because it's it's hell anyway after the sec um waited maybe two months two months later had a letter back from karna saying that i partially met the requirements um or the compet co competency of um alberta so um i was given a list of subjects to take uh, it was a total of nine subjects the total subjects would have been 10, but I, I did well enough for communications. So that was, the, that was the only thing I got exempted from, and I had to take all other nine subjects. These subjects were uh, med surge one and two. There was, um, um, what you call this, professional nursing in Canada. There was maternal and child health, mental health, pedia. What else? Yeah, basically, and clinicals also, uh, skills and practice. Clinical skills is the skills, and then a clinical practice is the practicum. So those are all the subjects as far as I remember. And um, so I enrolled later that year. That was 2012, I remember. Um, 2012 was a lucky year for me because that's when things changed. I finally got rid of the SEC, and I finally um, got into back into school in the nursing program. So I did the nursing program for a year or a little over a year, I'd say, because I started September and then I finished next the next year, November of 2013. And uh, after that, after finishing all the courses, it was passed to Karna and then Karna processed it and finally said, okay, you're good to take the um, licensure exam or the CRNE. So finally got that. The CRNE cost again. Oh, by the way, you had to pay for your own schooling. Uh, there was no financial aid or anything. I mean, some other people can apply for financial aid, but because I was working full time, I didn't um, qualify for it. So yeah, I was working full time at the same time. I was, um, oh, by the way, I got the healthcare aid job eventually after nine months of being in Canada, but it was with a private company, so it wasn't like a government kind of uh, institution. 
pretty much certified us as our, gave us our healthcare aid certificate out of working there for a year, which was really nice, and I owe them for that. And then um, shortly after, yeah, so I was working full time as a healthcare aide at the same time going to school and paying my bills and doing all that. It was really, really a tough time for me. And then 2014 came around and I registered for the February exam, took the February CRNA exam, and a month and a half later got the results that I finally passed. And um, during that time, af right after taking the exam, that I didn't look for a job anywhere until I was done taking the exam, and then I started looking. And then I didn't get any callbacks from the hospitals uh, in the city, and so I had to uh, look for options outside of the city, and that's what I did. So I'm now in rural nursing. I got a job a month after applying all over the place, and... Um, so here I am right now. So uh, that is it. That's where I am right now, you guys. And that's all the time I have for today. Just want to say hello to the following. April, Victoria Mariposa, uh, Rana G, Sylvia Ehiguara, um, Christina Lovis, Bella James, um, Kiki Kawa, and Jilly Bini, my best friend. <laughs> so just wanted to say hi to all of you and thank you so much for taking the time to uh, reach me and contact me and feel free to ask me any questions. Um, I make my next video soon probably be more.